Greetings, cyberdogs and citizens of the internet. This is Rendog coming at you from a cave entrance in an unknown 1.8 chunk in this Let's Play Minecraft survival series. In the previous episode, we made our way back to Silkworm Gang Island to check on our ladies. And in this episode, my friends, we are going to be venturing deep into the butthole of this cave to find some iron, some gold, some emeralds, some diamonds, and some freaking lapis. This is an Iron Man adventure, my friends, and it is going to be freaking sweet. I hope you got a tasty-ass beverage and some crunchy-ass snacks, my friends. Let's play some Minecraft survival. All right, my friends, give me, give me one second to sip on my tea, man. Mm. This is what I'd like to call the calm before the storm. Right now, we're kind of stuck between, literally stuck between a rock and a hard place. Out there is nighttime. <laughs> and we don't know where we are, so we don't want to go out there. And in this direction is a freaking unknown cave. And um, there's probably death waiting for us in this cave. Because the last time we went on an adventure together, things didn't go too well. Uh, one could say that I failed miserably. And if one said that, I would have to accept it. And I probably wouldn't argue with you. Because the, the reality of the situation is, the last adventure we went on... I lost all of our sweet ass enchanted gear. So I'm quite, how do we say, nervous about this particular adventure. Although we don't really have much to lose <laughs> in, in the form of, uh, of gear. The only thing that I could possibly lose on this particular adventure, Cyber Dogs, is my pride. I've really lost that once in this freaking season already, man. And I don't really want to do it again. I'm still recovering, man. My ego is still recovering from trapping my own self inside of an ocean temple. Let me pause while I uh, face palm. Welcome to today's Let's Play Minecraft survival series with me, Rendog. And let me tell you, my friends, I am in an adventurous mood today, man. It has been a long ass time since we went on an adventure because we have been spending a ton of time in Mole City working on the Molmart Bazaar. And the Molmart Bazaar is starting to look freaking sweet. But unfortunately, it's not finished yet. And double unfortunately, I've been spending many, many hours working on that thing. And I need to release my brain from, from the work. I need to go exploring. Hello, Batty. It has been a long time since I saw your cute little butthole, man. Where have you been? Oh yeah, I killed you in the last adventure. Oh, that's my bad. That's my bad. I see you've forgiven me, though. Batty's like a pet dog, man. You know, like if you smack a dog with a rolled up newspaper, he always comes back to you and always loves you. That's what Batty's like. I've incinerated her ass so many freaking times in this uh, in this series of uh, Minecraft survival. It's, it's unspeakable. I'm sorry about each and every one of your deaths, Batty. Always come back to me, man. <laughs> oh, man. But guys, in this particular adventure, I am super excited because... I want to collect some of the Minecraft materials that we need to continue in this Let's Play Minecraft Survival Series. Namely, I am looking for some of the standard items that we are sort of running dry on. And that includes irons. We are pretty much running almost out of irons. I've used a lot of iron to make a whole bunch of fences. And uh, I also need a butt ton of iron for a new project that I'm going to be doing. Uh, in Mall City and I don't really want to talk about it in this episode because this is an app this is a this is an adventure episode I don't want to talk about sad things in this uh, in this particular episode but all I'm going to tell you my friends is that we need some irons and that's what I'm going to try and collect um, I also want to collect a whole bunch of lapis what is Batty showing us down there man she's like come down here red diggity doll there's something so weird all right Batty I, I hear your call and I'm coming to you what a bit of time. Uh, there we go. So sweet. Oh man. What a bit of action. I've still got the skills. Batty. There ain't nothing here. Also, why are there no mobs spawning? I'm, I'm confused. Confused and nervous too. Calm before the storm people. I'm, t I'm telling you dudes. I've been enough in, uh, on enough of these adventures to know when Jazz is about to get freaking ugly. And um, 
Wow, that was a big ass sound. There is a massive cave pretty close to us here. Now, we also need to find some diamonds. Speaking about freaking sweet loots, we need to discover some diamonds because we're, we need to make a whole new set of uh, diamond armor and we need to make a whole new set of diamond tools. Oh, there's a mine shaft down there, so sweet. Oh man, awesome. All right, this is perfect, people. This is exactly what I was looking for. A nice little, like, mine shaft to explore or, or a really deep chavern. And it looks like we've got both. And there is some lapis. So wheat. And, uh, hmm. I'm still kind of wondering what the jazz is going down about the no spawns. It's kind of confusing me, man. We've got Batty, but Batty is definitely not a spawn. But I don't even hear the sound of any skeletons or any zombies or even slimes or anything. I don't know what is happening here, man. But you know what? I'm not going to complain. Um, oh, there's some gold. So wheat. And we actually need a butt ton of gold, guys. Because we, we haven't added a block of gold to Granny Dog's Monument in a long ass time. For those of you guys who are new subscribers to the Ren Dog channel. Firstly, I'm kind of angry with your asses. And you see this little bit of iron ore right here. You just... You just cast your eyeballs on this block of iron ore. Do you see how jagged it is? Do you have any idea how, any idea how spiky and sharp this jaggedy ass of iron ore is? Any idea? Well, it's coming straight for your freaking butt crack if you do not watch season 1, 2, and 3. Ah, thank you. <laughs> oh, man. But we need a whole butt ton of gold, guys, because in season, I believe it was season 2, I built a monument in honor of my grandmama dog who passed away. And uh, over the last 200 episodes or so, or how, for however long we've been playing Minecraft, I have been collecting gold and adding blocks to that monument in her honor. So we need a butt ton of gold, man, because I pretty much use all of our gold just for that. And we used a little bit of gold to make Beatrice the, the butler. Beatrice actually used to be a zombie. <laughs> we, uh, we cured her. We cured her infected ass. Um, and now she's the butler of of Rentopia, all of the Molho Castle. It's pretty sweet. <laughs> and I just heard the sound of, of a zombie. So, the calm I was talking about is now officially over. And, um... <sighs> I'm ready. I'm ready for action, okay, people? I, I am ready for action. I got this janky ad iron sword. Janky ass iron sword. Check it out. It's got sharpness one. It's gonna do a bit of damage. But I'm pretty sure... That uh, this is going to be a pretty tough adventure, man. An emerald! So sweet. Man, it's times like this that I miss Claw so much. We had a we had a sweet-ass pickaxe, man, called Claw. That had loot, or fortune, I think it was. Uh, and would, like, double up the loot that we discovered. Oh, man. I don't want to talk about it, okay? It hurts my soul. Uh, I think I want to hang around this mine shaft, though. Try and find some sweet-ass jazz. Now, guys, I've been reading the comments of the previous episode with some interest and uh <laughs> it's been awesome man because we went back to silkworm gang island in the last episode and a ton of you guys got all reminiscing up in here man you guys were like oh man i remember the stories that you used to tell about the silkworm gang in uh, in episode in season one and that was so awesome tell us more bro tell us more about the silkworm gang and i thought you know what guys I need to talk about the Silkum Gang a little bit because there's a butt ton of you new cyber dogs out there who don't even know what the Silkum Gang is. If you guys are subscribers like t in 2015 and 2014, you don't know what the freaking Silkum Gang is. And you are a Ren Dog video noob. I mean, I don't want to be rude, but it's true, man. You're a freaking Ren Dog video noob. And uh, I need to enlighten your asses into what the Silkum Gang is all about. So what I thought I, I would do in this video, guys, while we collect some sweet ass loots, um, is talk a little bit about the Silkum Gang, go over a little brief history of the Silkum Gang, and I, I was thinking about what I wanted to tell you guys. I wanted to tell you guys a brand new story about the Silkum Gang, um, and I, while I was on the tube today going to work, I was trying to think of one of the memories that I have of the gang that I could tell you guys that I haven't told you already. And I got a sweet one, man, that I, I want to tell you about uh, in this video. So sit back and relax, my sabba diggity dogs. It is story time with Uncle Rendo. <laughs> so back in the day, when I was 10 years old, my friends, I started a gang at my school called the Silkworm Gang. And it all started one day in maths class 
when um, I had just got my pen license, uh, because at my school you had to earn your pen license. Uh, <laughs> kind of draconian if I think about it now. But I had just got my pen license and I had also been thinking about starting a group or a gang at my school. And what I did, one of the first things that I did with this pen that I had earned uh, from my teacher was I decided to start a gang uh, called the Silkworm Gang. And what I did was I, on a piece of paper, um, while I was in maths class, I wrote on this piece of paper, I wrote uh, something like, if, if you want to join my gang, put your name down here. <laughs> oh man. Um, it was an, it, it was an ambitious shout to be fair i mean i just assumed that people would join my gang right i mean of people were going to join the gang anyway i i wrote this on a piece of paper in, in matt's class and i left it on my desk and as i was about to leave the class i said hey everybody if you want to join my gang stick your name on this piece of paper and then i ran out of the class because i was so embarrassed man i, I you know i didn't want to be there i didn't want to be the butthole in the class when uh, no one actually put their name down. <laughs> Imagine what a butt I would have looked like then. And I left the class, and um, when I came back, there were names on the freaking list, and I was so stoked because my dream of starting a gang was coming true. And uh, I picked up a couple of members, which was so sweet, and one of the first things that we needed to do was find a fort, right? And the reason that I was so inspired to make this gang, because at the time, oh, there is some more gold, so weird. At the time, I was reading The Secret Seven, which is like an old school story about like a gang of kids. And uh, this inspired, this is what inspired me to make the Silkworm Gang, right? And once I had collected a few of these members um, from the piece of paper, um, at the end of, of a class, it might have been the same day, it might have been the next day, um, I said, come on guys, let's go and find ourselves a sweet ass fort for our gang. Because every gang needs a sweet fort, right? And uh, we went exploring, I think we went exploring after school while we were waiting for our parents to come pick us up. At my school, like, um, if, you, if you had sport, then you would go play sport after class. Or if you didn't have sport, you would just like hang around. You'd like play on the fields with your friends or go to the cricket nets or like just, just do whatever you want. It was pretty sweet actually and you'd, you'd usually have like half an hour to 45 minutes to just to just jam if you wanted to you know to just like do whatever you wanted there is an emerald uh, and the newly formed silkworm gang and i went on a mission to find a fort and we went uh, past the tennis courts at the back of my school on our hunt for a for a for a fort somewhere we were just looking for anything that sort of resembled the fort an abandoned building would do um you know like uh, an old like tree house would be ideal um anything like that like anything where we could sort of hang out at lunchtime every day as a gang uh w w w was exactly what we were looking for and uh hello zombies say hello to my little friend and on our search for a so weed ass pimping pad we stumbled across a mulberry tree now a mulberry tree for those of you guys who don't know is what silkworms feed on so it's, well they feed on they feed on lots of stuff but silkworms like to eat the leaves of mulberry trees and mulberry trees make these delicious ass little fruit right they're like little berries and mm, they are freaking delicious man speaking of delicious give me one second mm. And um, we found this mulberry tree growing behind this giant ass building in our school. There is a freaking creep here. And it was sort of growing in front of a wall. And suddenly it struck us. This would be a perfect spot for a fort, right? Because it had a natural defense line already in the wall that the mulberry tree was growing in front of. And it had a huge pile of like wood and and like scrap metal and tins like t like tons of tins like old oil cans and stuff like that. It had this huge pile of of scrap very close to it, right? And this scrap came from oh my goodness, there's a freaking cave spider spawning thing over here, man. Let's just cover that shame. Um. This, <laughs> all of the scrap 
came from one of the teachers who I guess he was like a hoarder and he collected everything that he could find like old bits of wood and, and old bits of iron and he, he piled all of this jazz up outside of his house and it was basically right next to this mulberry tree and it came to us in an epiphany that we could use all of this scrap metal and all of this wood to construct a wall around this mulberry tree and by building a wall around this mulberry tree we would make for ourselves a fort and thus was spawned the the silkworm gang fort over the next couple of weeks or so every single lunchtime myself and my new silkworm gang members would go to the mulberry tree and we would build and construct the silkworm gang fort slowly but surely we built the walls of this fort higher and higher and there is a dungeon over there so we until it was about five and a half foot high i would say five and a half six foot high man the wall around the fort was freaking huge and we found a dungeon so we let's just kill this thing man Bam! and this became our home away from home man <laughs> The, this mulberry tree with its giant wall around it was amazing. It became the envy of everybody else in my class and everybody else in my year. But it also became the envy of a butthole called Gareth. Who would become the leader of the freaking space gang. And Gareth, that butt, would eventually initiate what came to be known as the Great Gang War of Nanifo. <laughs> but before we carry on with that guys... We've got some chests to crack over here, man. Dear Lord! Last time I was an adventure, you did not protect my butthole, and I died and lost all my gear, so you've got to give me something sweet in reparation, man. Come on, please, Lord, give me something sweet. Kaplium! Ooh, some iron ingots. Well, I can't say I'm too excited about that. I'll take the bread, though. I'll take the gunpowder. I should probably take the saddles. TBH. I probably should take the saddles. What can we get rid of? Get rid of this freaking crafting table. Take a saddle. And we can get rid of these bones. Pick up another saddle. So sweet. Alright, give us something sweet. Some more iron ingots. Two music discs. Damn. And an iron ho uh, horse armor. I think I'll definitely take the iron horse armor. Guys, why do I always bring so many freaking carrots on these adventures? Oh, man. I'm such a butt. Let's get rid of the stick. Take the music disc. I need, I, I need to take all three of these things, actually. Because they're all awesome. Alright, we'll get rid of these 29 freaking carrots. Take another music disc. And let's get rid of... I want the coal also, though. The coal is so good. We can get rid of the steak. Oh, oh, sacrilege. I almost said get rid of the steaks. Sorry, guys. That was unnecessary. <laughs> let's collect this sweet-ass mossy cobblestone, too, man. And yeah, man. That is pretty much how the Silkworm Gang came to be. And Gareth, the arch nemesis of mine and the Silkworm Gang, would soon try to take over the Silkworm Gang and would, in fact, invade the Silkworm Gang fort and take it for his, himself. Um, Gareth was a sneaky bastard. His dad had this epic printer, right? <laughs> Back in the day, like, printers were still, like, super high technology. And his dad had this sweet ass printer that could print the most awesome looking uh, money that you could possibly think of. When I first started the Silkum Gang, I made a currency called uh, Silk Dollars, I think, or something like that. And basically what I did was my brother and I drew these, these bits of, like, we, we basically made up money, right? So on a piece of paper, we drew, like, four, four, um... Four bits of money, I guess. So like four dollars, right? And then we asked our mum to to photocopy them at, at her her work, and then we cut them out, and, and that became like a currency. And <laughs> that was the currency that the Silkworm Gang used to trade stuff and sell stuff between each other. We used to like buy each other's pens and and food from each other. And uh, Gareth saw that this was a sweet ass idea, and he liked the idea so much that he did the same thing. But instead of drawing the money like my brother and I did. He used his dad's so weed ass printer to print what would basically destroy silk dollars, man. He printed money called space bucks. And he made these space bucks look so freaking sweet, dudes. 
Oh man, he used like proper images in the middle. Each 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 different uh, denomination of money had like a different character in it. Like 10 bucks had a different face to 20 bucks. And uh, you could see the number really clearly and they, they kind of looked like dollars because they were printed in this sort of green color. And when he printed out a whole bunch of those space bucks and brought them to school, every single freaking kid in my class wanted space bucks. And you know what happened, dudes? I lost a whole bunch of members from the Silkum gang. They all defected and went over to freaking Gareth's space butt gang. And the space fort, <laughs> which was the space gang's um, hideout, was basically on the other side of that wall that I was telling you about, right? So where the mulberry tree was growing, on the other side of the wall, in front of which the mulberry tree was growing, was the space fort, or the space gang's fort. So our forts were really, really close together. And which meant that it was basic war was basically imminent, right? If you put two like sparring nation nations next to each other, things are not gonna go well eventually, unless you can come to some sort of a truce. And there was going to be no truce between that butthole Gareth and I, man. We were arch nemesi. And uh, one day the war began and the space gang invaded um, the Silkworm gang. And by invaded, what I mean is one lunchtime, we all, you know, like we ran out to go to our, our, our forts and the space gang got to the Silkworm gang fort before we could get there. And they basically claimed it, man. They stuck their flag in the ground, so to speak. And we were relegated, relegated to go and spend our um, lunches in the old Space Gang Fort, which was this dusty ass basement underneath uh, the theater of the school. Man, it was it was horrible down there, man. Brings back bad memories. I'm having flashbacks up in there, man. Give me a second. Ah. But uh, we were we were not we were not going quietly into the night, people. <laughs> the Silkum Gang would not let that butthole. Uh, get have our fort for very long and that's how the great um, silkworm war began and we managed to defeat gareth and his his freaking butthole space gang on his home ground we got them to invade the the old space fort which we had now fortified with traps and uh, and and like trip wires and a whole bunch of sweet jazz and we ambushed those buttholes in the space gang's old fort we taunted them to come in and as they came in they triggered all of these traps that we had built they hit trip wires which dropped 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 bags of mud on top of their heads we unleashed a furious barrage of dust bombs and water balloons and man we absolutely annihilated those freaking buttholes on that day. And <laughs> we fought for our fort and we fought well and we fought with heart and we fought with, with every bit and inch of soul that we had. And the Silkworm Gang won back its fort in the great gang battle of Nineveh. <laughs> and after that great war between the two the, the two, arguably the two greatest gangs that were ever in that, uh, in that school. A kind of iron curtain, if you will, settled across the school. And even though we were enemies, we had more respect for each other after that battle. And I think it's because that battle was like one of the funnest things that any of us had ever done. And there is a cave spider coming for my ass! And when humans share in, like, tragedy, for example, or happiness of any kind, it brings them closer together, right? And I think because all of us shared in this joyous occasion that was the great gang war, we kind of felt closer to each other. And we gave up the space gang fort. We gave it back to Gareth and his bottles. We were like, guys, we're not going to hold this as reparations against you. And here are some lapis. You can have your fort back. No stress. Let's enter a period of peace. And that's what happened. And the next few weeks were, were joyous and peaceful. And space bucks were traded across the, the border. <laughs> and when I say across the border, I mean across the wall. We were buying stuff from each other across the wall. Like uh, buying each other sandwiches and, and chocolates and juices and stuff from each other. It was, a, it was a joyous time, man. It was a joyous time for both both of our, our gangs. But inevitably, those kind, of, uh, those kind of times don't last, man. And inevitably, things would go sour once again. And that, my friends, 
is the next part of the Silkworm Gang tale.